Hi, this is Denise from Foursquare Marker Farm, and this is a breed study pattern, spotlight, historical pattern, and knit with me all wrapped up in one. You might recognize this skein from the breed study if you saw that video first. And this is the Devon skein. And on the breed study, um, I show you what I make at the end. And one of the reasons why I felt like it was important for me to split this video is because, first of all, it would be kind of long if I finished the skein or finished doing the knit up in the actual breed study video. So much easier uh, just to show you the end result of what I did. And then secondly, because I'm really highlighting the historical value of this pattern, it seemed best to just make two separate videos for that reason. Okay, so uh, this particular skein of yarn um, turned out to be almost 100 yards, and it's a one-ounce skein. Well, it's good enough for me. I could have, you know, it's not like I was really racing to get a certain yardage. It's just this is the weight I wanted, and I felt comfortable with it. So I got about 100 yards of it. And it's really, really coarse fiber. And um, I've never been much into knitting swatches. Uh, I always feel like if I'm going to bother to knit a sample, I'd like to make the sample something that I can use. So I generally sample the Brie studies by making something in particular. So with this being a very coarse yarn, I had to think of something that I could use it for. And I figured, hey, um, if I'm going to go ahead and use it, I might as well take this opportunity to do a historical pattern because I haven't. Um, been able to do one in a while except for the Sontag but that's a different story you have to wait for that one to come out so anyway it was digging around trying to find things that would fit for the amount of yardage I have and also the coarseness of the fiber so I looked at some mitts but this is really coarse so I didn't think even my hands would be able to tolerate the mitts and then there was one for a pot holder and I probably would still make that pot holder it's a quick and easy historical pattern uh, but there wasn't really much pizzazz to it and I just wanted to have something a little well just a little more than just the, a square so I, while I was looking at the potholder I came across uh, a tidy and the thing about historical patterns is that they didn't call things what we call things now sometimes and so when you're looking through patterns, it's, sometimes it's hard to find what you're looking for because you don't know what the terminology was. And so basically a, a tidy is a tablecloth, a table runner, um, placemat kind of thing. And you've seen them if you look at the historical videos and historical movies where there will be a wooden table and you'll see the material doily type table runner type table cloth placemat kind of thing that covers the wood um just sometimes it's just a, a woven square or something like that and or and the, the whole point is to basically to keep it tidy to protect it from the dust to protect it from anything that you put on top of it to protect it from dishes or teacups or what have you and so there's just like little throw tiles little throw hankies that you throw over top of the wooden items um little mugs little mug rugs and things like that and I, I don't know if a lot of people still do that kind of thing I know that I do and we do in my house in the church because we have a lot of uh antique wood pieces and they need to be protected from vases or whatever it is we're sitting on top of them so I decided I wanted to make one of those and I was digging through the patterns trying to find the tidy and I found one uh, in a book. It's one of the work woman's books and I believe that particular book, uh, let me see, I have it down somewhere. It's from 1891. That's what it is. It's actually the book is called Homework. Uh, it's from 1891, that's where it is. And that pattern, you can find it on Ravelry. 
It's called the Old Fashioned Shell Tidy. Uh, and of course, I went right to it because I love the old shell uh, feather and fan type patterns. And there is a difference between feather and fan and the old shell patterns. And this one is the old shell. So I'll provide the link uh, to the uh, Old Fashioned Shell Tidy below um, in Ravelry. And then it will take you to the knitting and uh, dot com website, which is one of my favorite websites uh, for the historical patterns. And you'll find that there is a lovely lady named Sarah. Uh, let's see, what's her last name? Sarah Bradbury who's translated the pattern um, into um, the modern knitting language. But if you click the link for uh, the Reverie pattern, you'll, it'll also take you to the Google Archive, the Google Books, where you can see that pattern um, in its original state. So you can do it that way, or you can look at the Sarah Bradbury um, translation or update the updated one however you want to call that and do that there so sarah Bradley has a swatch on the knitting and com and that's basically what i'm going to do because i want this just to be like placemat size with this very coarse yarn so the it's really simple just like the the shell and the fan of feather it's just a really simple pattern so here it is basically you want to cast on stitches in multiples of 23 plus 4. So the sample um, on the knitting and dot com is cast on 73 or 96. And in this case, I'm not going to have enough yarn for that because I only have 100 yards. So what I did is I cast on the multiples of 23. So I had 46 plus 4. And that's how I started mine. And this will this will give me uh, a, a nice little size here. And I'm just going to knit till I finish. So you knit two. You knit two together four times. And then you yarn over, knit one as a group seven times. Yarn over. Then you knit two together four times. Then you repeat that until you have two stitches left. And then you knit those two stitches. And then the next three rows are purl, knit, purl. And that's all there is to this pattern. Really nice and simple. And this just gives you kind of an idea of how it's working up. If you're familiar with that uh, shell pattern, then you'll have an idea. So I'm going to go ahead and knit this up. And so you can see it. And then I'll block it. And that's basically it for that entire pattern. The tidy is complete. And I blocked it onto uh, my quilter's block, which is a pretty handy little piece of board for blocking. And I had about two feet to spare. It's turned out really nicely. I put this sample inside my book. Uh, this definitely had to be blocked. I don't always block things. Actually, I don't block most things. Uh, not like quite like this. But this guy really needed to be blocked pretty badly. And it, otherwise, it just you really wouldn't get to see the pattern for the the shell. Okay, this this was basically pretty simple. So if you need a little uh, historical knit fix uh, this is a really great pattern and it's a really great pattern for a sample as I said I only used an ounce um, of Devon when I spun this so and I'm really big on making small samples go a really long way that's it for this pattern uh, you can follow the link below to the pattern on Ravelry which will take you to the updated pattern and also it will take you to the historical pattern that is in the archives so if you want to download that entire book of historical patterns you can do so 
Thank you very much for watching. I also follow the link to the actual Devon Breed Study so you can see how I started out. If you're a subscriber, thank you for watching. If you're not, go ahead and subscribe and click the like button. Have a great day.